Hello guys, and welcome back to Terraria for you mod. So, in the last episode, we, um, oh well, well I got to see my new armor though. This episode, we, um, not load in, please, thank you. This episode, we, what did we do last episode? I don't really remember what we did. But, what I do remember is that we've gotten a lot of developer armor. <laughs> Oh, I know. The Celestial Shell, that's what we were doing last episode. We we're crafting right here. The Celestial Shell turns the holder into werewolf at night and a merfolk when entering water. Minor increases to all stats. That's what we made last episode. And to get that, we need to fight many enemies, so I spawned those enemies with cheats. And, well. When I did spawn in those enemies with cheats, let's just say I got a lot of, you know, I guess, loot from them. And those loot bags. Guy contains some developer armors. One of the armor that I got was Loki's armor, and now I look like some devilish person. So it was rather nice. But anyway, th that's pretty much all that done. So now we're gonna get on fighting the boss. The next boss we have on the list, the Lunatic Cultist. And to fight him, we need to kill all four of these dudes, and then you know, the Lunatic Cultist will spawn and blah blah blah. But this, oh, I hit him! Great, I hit him. I was gonna say that I need a, yeah, I do, a, an arena would be useful for this, I must admit. An arena would be useful, I don't really have an arena. So will you take out these dudes and we can build an arena. Stop. Okay, they're dead now. Now all we need to do is take out those cultists right there and we can spawn in, and we know that a cultist will spawn, but... First thing to build a cursed arena, just because it can be rather difficult about one, or actually... You're not screwed with any arena. Okay, you guys just go away, it's gonna be a bit of a pain. So just please just do go away. Beautiful, ow, stop, I fell. Because are, are we gonna explore in slang in this episode? Probably. Is Are we gonna be able to do something about it? Probably not. Which is always great. Clear out all the items on the ground and let's now slay these dudes. Spawn in the lunatic cultist. Here he is. Let's go, lads. Let's go. Let's go, I guess we're with this. Here he is. Doing that cultist. Great start, I forgot to spawn in my pet. Uh oh god. Yeah, this is this is him, this the lunatic cultist. A basically a wizard. What else would you call him? Basically a wizard with all his powers. And he is the one that basically praises the moon lord and blah blah blah. And once you kill him, he's going to spawn in the Well, the four lunar pillars which are going to invade the world, which is rather interesting, but first you have to obviously kill him. It's a bit of a task in itself, but yeah, the Lunatic Cult is basically just some fanatic dude that just praises the moon lord. And yeah, so we're gonna slay him. From I ain't dealing no damage to him. He hasn't literally hit me, pretty much. But, either way, he's still getting rather annoying. And sometimes one of his attacks is where he does that, like, thing that he just saw. That he spawns in, like, those, just a little sigil thing, and he just spawns in, like, I guess... He's clones, and you have to hit the correct one. If you don't hit the correct one, then he's going to basically spawn in some tougher enemies. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you one about yeah, right here. You see, there's three of these dudes, but only one of them is real. And if we hit the fake one, he's going to spawn in like some enemies, which are rubber to the defeat. Aka the dragon, the phantom dragon, no, not phantom dragon, something along those lines. So basically, just celestial dragon, something like that. And he's a bit of a toughie to defeat. So unless we hit the correct dude. Unless we hit the correct one, then we should be fine. Unless we hit the wrong one, I mean, we'll be fine. And also, if you, you know, spend too much time just choosing the wrong one, then... Yeah, he's gonna be spawning enemies from the sigil. When two things happen. Either when you hit the wrong one, or two, when you basically just don't do it in time, when you run out of time, basically. So we're gonna find out the real one and do kill him. It's a bit of a pain, because this is just type of boss fight that you have to, like, basically fly around to survive him. I have to do it again because, like, literally, he has so many attacks you cannot stay near him. You have to fly far away from him, and sometimes he doesn't even realize that he's doing that attack when it's too late. That's only when you realize. So, yeah, and he does do it rather often, so we're gonna stay pretty worried. So, he has many attacks, but they're not too hard. If you stay far away from him, then you'll be fine. But when you do something like that, then it's not too fun. So, we're gonna be still sick of our laser machine, and I think this might be the um, strongest weapon that's going to we are ironically still on full health, and God Mode is disabled, yep, God Mode is disabled, so we're doing rather good. We're still, you know, max health, we're doing rather good, haven't died yet. But there is one little issue, um, oh, there he's doing that thing again. Let's just say that, 
Um, yeah, he still has a lot of health. We have a lot of health, and we're regenerating very quickly and not taking too much damage. But so is he. Apart from the fact that he's not regenerating, he is still he still has quite a lot of health, and we're not dealing too much damage to him. The only time we're dealing a lot of damage to him is when we're up close and personal to him. But when we are up close and personal to him, then we also take a lot of hits. Which is not good. Oh, stop the slime. Okay, we nearly got him at half health. I don't think yeah, he doesn't have the different stages. This is all the boss fight is. He doesn't like, I don't know, gets more powerful weapons, like turn into something different. No. This is all the boss fight is. He has no second stages and stuff like that, like most bosses do in her area. He just has this. But he can get tougher if you obviously hit the wrong one in that little thing right there, because he's gonna spawn in some rubber to enemies. If he's gonna spawn in a huge dragon that flies around and just destroys you. And also he's got he can spawn in like some golden I don't know, golden octopus head looking thing. Which is also rather powerful, shoots some rubber dodgy stuff, so yeah, that's rather nice. And nobody not hit it wrong with it. Good. So yeah, how do I we're nearly at half health. Just a few thousand more health before we get at half. Okay, 823 and half health, good. We got him below half, and we are still at max health, so we're doing rather good. This boss fight, I must admit. And yeah, actually, you know, he does get harder for the boss fight. He's those purple things. I forgot, that's an exclusive to um, expert mode. So he only gets tougher, I guess, in expert mode. In normal mode, he just has all this. He just has his normal attacks, but yeah, I forgot. After you get him past down half health, he does get like those, that attack where he shoots up little stars at me, and those black things, which. I think, yeah, I think those black things right there are hard mode. Uh, expert mode exclusive because I'm playing on expert mode because I'm an expert at this game. <laughs> but yeah, those are thing expert mode exclusive. But that one that he shoots those little stars at you, I think there are like in just yeah, those one right there. I think that's in the normal game itself. You know, they're not expert mode. But we didn't get hit a few times, but most of those attacks didn't do any damage to, to me. Thanks to the uh, tabby and all that stuff that we have. Uh, basically, master ninja gear, which we obviously did cheat to get, but oh well. Nobody needs to know that. No, 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 that is quite good. Oof. Nelly. Good. 1,000 or 13,000 health left. So quite a bit, but we're still doing pretty fine for our health, so it should be fine. But because this fight, this boss fight isn't too hard, as a punishment for this fight being pretty easy, after this, he spawns in four huge towers around the world. The Stardust, uh, Lunar, um, Solar, and the Nebula Pillars, all four of those. Which have all of their different, you know, enemies. And all of them are, I guess, like different classes. The Solar Pillar is like melee class. The Stardust is like summoner class. The Nebula is like, you know, uh, some like mana, magic, magic use class. And the fourth one, the last one, the Vortex is like basically just like range and guns and stuff like that. Which is rather cool. And I'm being, uh, why do you always have to call me when I'm in the middle of recording? Very good, I should pause the game. I'll be back in a quick second. Okay, okay, we're back. The lunatic cult is nearly dead. But he's still breathing, sadly. And I don't really know how we can take him down. Oh god, that was a big hit. Alright, 5,000 health, not too much left. We've nearly killed him. But the thing is about him, yes, he said that he is not too difficult of a boss. He's rather easy to kill. But the one problem about him is that when you do kill him, he's going to spawn big, huge four towers with very tough enemies that you have to kill. You have to. The only way to get rid of them from your world is by killing by killing 150 enemies in a certain zone. Yes, 150 enemies in that zone. Uh, to actually disable the tower's shields, the pillar's shield, before you can actually take the pillar itself down. Which is such a long chore. But you have to do it. And after you take them down, then a moon lord will spawn. But either way, the Lunar Cultist has nearly been killed. And the Lunar Cultist is dead. Here we are. Look, at the pillar. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh no, yeah, that, that's my safe one. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that right there was the Vortex Pillar. Just spawned right above. Then we have the Nebula Pillar close by, the Solar Pillar, and off right here, the Stardust Pillar. And all of them also drop like. Star like cells, I guess. I don't know what you call them, but dust. Yeah, like star dust, dust. No, what are they called? Uh, because you can make like weapons like the solar flare is a pretty powerful weapon. Yeah, that's what they call solar flagments. Yeah, 
They all drop fragments. All the towers drop fragments after you kill the towers. And those fragments can be used to make... Well... Web... Oh, wait, what? A treasure bag? A lunatic cultist? The lunatic cultist doesn't have a treasure bag. The lunatic cultist is the only expert mode boss that does not have a treasure bag. But for you mod here, hit me up with a lunatic cultist treasure bag. Isn't that just amazing? Forgot he doesn't have a treasure bag. Oh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, so all those drop their own their dust, you know, all the, I mean, the fragments, all the pills drop their own fragments you can use to make weapons. And I think, and, you know, when you take down, or when all four pillars fall, the Moon Lord will start spawning right after. So, you know, if we won't have time to craft any weaponry after we take that pillar, let's say I want weapons from the Stardust Pillar, but I take them out in this order. Vortex, Nebula, Solar, and then Stardust at the end, and I won't have time to make any Stardust things because the Moon Lord will be there to kill us. So that's why the one that you don't want anything from that is the pillar you should kill last. And that will be the Nebula Pillar. I don't want anything from the Nebula Pillar, but that's just magic. I don't like magic stuff too much. And the things that drop isn't too good, so as I just basically don't want it too much. But the things I do want are the Solar. The Solar Pillar drops amazing stuff. The Stardust drops pretty good stuff. And the vortex, you can make some pretty good stuff with that too. That's 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 the order we're going to do it, and we're going to do the nebula last. But first, we're going to obviously do the solar, because it gives you like pretty powerful weapons. The solar flare and the solar spear, which are pretty powerful. I don't know what's his name. The daybreak. That's that's the spear's name. The daybreak, which are all both pretty powerful. So we're going to go and do the solar pillar first. Then the stardust, we're going to be able to make a summon. We're going to be able to make the dragon summon, which is pretty powerful. And then the forest, we're going to be able to be able to make a gun, which is pretty powerful. And after that, the nebula just gives some magic stuff, which I might make, but, you know, don't need them. So the vortex pillar, solar pillar, I mean, will be the first... Oh, no, no, why did I teleport over there? Solar pillar will be the first one we will deal with. But first, I just deal with all the stuff that we got from the Lunatic Cultist. Which was actually a rather easy boss fight. I didn't, I didn't even have to cheat as easy it was. Uh, either way, one of the things we got is the ancient manipulator. Basically, this is what you need to actually craft with these, you know, these fragments. Because I say, if I want to make the, you can also make armor from the things and stuff like that. But let's say I want to make the soul eruption, I need to use the ancient manipulator, which we do have. So yeah. But also you can make the pickaxes and armor. But the armor has one thing we don't have: luminite. And luminite you get after you kill Moon Lord. So yeah, we have to obviously kill Moon Lord. And you can make all the armors of luminite, all the pickaxes, and the all that good stuff. Does you first have to slay Moon Lord to actually get that? But yeah, let's just smack the ancient manipulator down, and yeah, that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, the armor, I mean, the solar armor is what we're gonna make first, because obviously all the armors, also just like the pillar, just like the dust, have their own things. So the vortex pillar gives you like boost for like range stuff. The nebula armor gives you like boost for magic. The stardust gives you boost for summoner, and the solar gives you boosts for melee. Basically, what I'm basically, I'm basically a melee dude. Actually, I do use most. Actually, most of my weapons are ranged, but ah, oh, well, who knows? I might make both the vortex and this nebula, but that would mean that we'd have to fight the moon lord more than once to get enough luminite. Big deal. I don't know. I'm gonna choose what I really would want. Uh, but that's just that. But nobody cares about that. Um, I just smack this thing down somewhere. I don't know where. I just smack it down. Just anywhere. Yeah, I'll smack it right here. You can have it. Take it. I don't want it. But that's the thing. This one. Don't you think about it? See, this is how it looks when I'm attempting, when I, you know, the preview, because it's, you know, like, a preview how it's gonna look. See, this is how it looks like. If, like, it gets the ball in the middle and those two things above it, but when I place it down, it looks really different. Interesting, isn't it? Yep. Uh, but let's see what's in the treasure bag, and this is basically this treasure bag, because all the bosses, all of the bosses have treasure bags in expert mode in Terraria. The Lunatic Cult is the only exception. He's the one that does not have a treasure bag for some odd reason. But, well, Forium Mod gave him a treasure bag. So, let's see what it has. Oh, my God. It gives you the Lunatic... Oh, the Lunatic's Prime outfit. Oh, yes. Because you can dress up as the Lunatic Cult, I guess, if you want to. By getting... By buying the Lunatic... Um, by buying the blue robes, which you can get from the Cloth Year. Which, where is the Cloth Year? Which you can get from the cloth here after obviously killing the mm, thingy. Right there, you see, I can. Oh no, yeah, you can. I can buy the solar cultists in the day, and the lunar cultists, obviously, the blue one in the nighttime. So yeah, 
So I can basically buy the robe and for the mask, for his, you know, signature mask. Yeah, this one, because normally you can only buy the, um, what is it called? You normally you can only buy, like, that hood that you could see, that you could see there. I don't, I know you know all this, but I will. You see this type, this hood that those uh, cultists had that were praising him. That's the only one you can buy, obviously, the blue variety. But the way to get this one is to get his mask, which he does have a mask. So that's the only way you can dress up as the cultist, but, well, I guess for you mod. Just gave it to us for free. Oh, wait, what is this? Zealous Ancient Lights. Creates a barge of primordial lights. That's interesting. This, oh, yep, this is basically his attack. Oh, that's so cool about stuff things. Oh my god, it's powerful. Oh yes. And look at the things that it does, like, like that's pretty cool. You see these explosions? Rather interesting. Oh, I think I'm gonna use this. This is pretty cool damage. So put out for this. Good. Yes. Let's see how we look in this. What poor base? The lunatic cultist now. Yes, we are the lunatic cultist. Do I need this? I actually do need this bottom here. I'm basically the lunatic cultist now. <laughs> I'm basically the lunatic. Yeah, I'm literally the lunatic cultist now. But I think I'm gonna stay as Loki, to be honest. I like better. I have a second weapon. Ruthless Ancient Flame. So must multiple. Okay, basically, yeah, that's this. So basically, we just get basically his attacks. So this is what we get. But, oh god, this is violent. So for that, yes, we're keeping that. So that out for that. Good. And the final murderous ancient frost. Oh yeah, and our base just in real. It's just his attacks basically. And this one's oh god, oh, this is so powerful. Crikey. What should we swap this out for? Probably for that. I'm not gonna use that. Oh my god, yes. So many weapons. Oh my god, good. We have to deal with something good. These are amazing. I love these. Truly amazing. And armor. I don't know if I'm gonna take the armor. To be honest, the thing I like how I look. Oh look at this now. Look at trapped. Cool, yeah, we're gonna keep these because they're rather powerful. I like these. Does this one like vibrate? If I drop this. Oh, it floats. Oh, yes, I like this. And this is actually the um, like shiny one. It's basically that. This is, oh, this is like an expert weapon. Yeah, this is one that we always get. These ones are like, I guess, different. But I like them. Good. These ones gonna like, sell them. I don't need them. I'm gonna use them. Take it good. This gel, all these rockets, I don't need them either. Take them. Oh, yeah, I don't even sell them for like anything. Good, put the money away. I oh, yeah, have a lot more space in my inventory. Crikey. Yeah, I see, I don't have those anymore in me. Good, that's a lot more space. Function medals, I guess I'm gonna keep them on me. Now, this, do we want to look, uh, look like the lunatic cultist or like Loki? What do we want? I don't know now. Hmm. The lunatic cultist is pretty cool. Uh. I'll just, I'll just stay as Loki for now. The Lieutenant Cultist outfit I shall do keep though. Good, smack that in there. Uh, good, keep that there for now. But now, ladies and gentlemen, now let's go and go to the solar pillar, pillar and try to kill some enemies there to take down the solar pillar. Wonderful. Truly wonderful. So we're gonna do it in this order. In this order. Oh, I thought it was over here, but now it's over here. Good. First, we're gonna take them the solar pillar. We're gonna destroy that pillar first. Oh uh, yeah, solar pillar first. Then, the Stardust pillar. Then we're gonna go all the way to the side of the world, past the nebula, to the vortex pillar. And the last, we're gonna take down the nebula pillar. That's the order. So now let's go and start off with the solar pillar. Let's go. No time to waste. With, uh, new weapons: ancient light, ancient flame, and the ancient frost. All ancient. It's pretty powerful. Pretty cool. This one I must say is probably like the more one that has like the biggest projectiles. Look how many projectiles spawning in. God. It's total destruction. This one does have a few. This is very short range, but it's very powerful. It's just it out in this dude. Oh yes, it destroys it. And this one just shoots pretty far and they do bounce off things and explode, so it's pretty cool too. I must say if we want to make a deal a lot of damage pretty quickly, it's this one. Uh, but here we are, we're approaching solar pillar. Oh yeah, oh at the pillar we have this little Crawlipedes, which, well, first of all, they lag the hell out of your game, that's what they do. Second of all, if you're in the sky whilst you find them, they will, I mean, they will destroy you. So, yeah, you, you have to stay on the ground in the solar pillar, because those little carterpedes, those little thingy crawlies will destroy you if you're in the air. Which is not cool. What are these? I don't know, I just ate them. Cool. So, yeah, they will destroy you. So, you have to stay on the ground, but when we're on the ground, we have all those ground troops. Oh, God, that pillar is a mess. 
I want to set my spawn point right here, so I'm going to respawn quicker. But yeah. Oh god, this is indeed a pain. Alright. Yep, here it is. Okay, so when are the spawn will say, but only go past this point. We're technically in the region. That's a pretty big radius. Oh, this pillar has a huge radius. Yeah, it goes up to the other. That is a huge radius. But the enemies... No. Then the enemies don't spawn yet. This is basically just technically in the radius of it. But the enemies only start spawning now. Still has a pretty big radius. Here they are. There's a Carapedia. Oh, there they all are. Oh, god, yeah, I cannot see a thing. That's how, that's how laggy it is. This lag, god. Oh, god. We have to kill 150. 150 of these enemies to break the. Oh, god, this lag. To break the shield so we can actually take down the pillar. But we're not dead. Because of all this lag, we're not dead. Oh, this home's in on enemies. Oh, yes. This is amazing. And we're not dead, by the way. But yeah, if not the lag, we'll be fine, by the way, because the game lag is like hell. Oh, my, um, my cousin's husband is coming, you know, to England from Poland, um, soon, at the beginning of August, I'm never sure, and he's basically a computer programmer, so hopefully he'll help me with, like, this lag, maybe giving me some programmer tips on what to do, since so he's a programmer, computer programmer, you know, programs computers, I guess, just knows a lot of computers, so, yeah, maybe he'll help me, but until then, until he comes, I'm gonna be here by myself, playing, destroying Gotham, Solar pillars, all well, the slag. We're doing pretty good. We're still not dead just because we're pretty much fighting on a barrier. There's not too many enemies. It's only what if we'd be like inside, like if we'd be like inside the center, the epicenter of the pillar, we'd be dead. But because we're on the edge, there's only a few of them spawning. It's a number that we can't indeed handle. It's pretty good. If we'd be there up close, we'd be dead by now. But now we can like leave the region, you know, single them out, you know, make spawn a lot of them when we're near here. Spawn a lot of them, then go back. And make them stop spawning and clear out whoever is here and then go back, spawn more and so on and so on. It's just spawning, uh, let the game spawn in a sustainable amount, take them out and go back in and so on. It's already killed 50 of them, so there's 100 more, yep, right there. And the pillar's shield will fall and we're going to be able to take down the solar pillar. Pretty cool. Okay, okay, we have this dude. And the best way to attract the carap those carapies' attention is just to go in the air. And I think gonna come towards you, but it's dead now. I'm right, very good. This weapon, I must say, this I think is my favorite weapon. Let's be honest, yeah. This is because it homes in, so I can just aim it like up there. Still got, well, I can aim near it, still, and it's got a home in it. Hidden. And deals massive damage. I don't have to click, I can hold it down. Yeah, I love this weapon. But let's maybe give the ancient flame a chance. Oh, is this blow? This, this basically blows everything up. This is just nukes. Yeah, this one isn't as powerful, I must admit. And has rubber, yeah, it has rubber short range. 100 damage, god, I just got destroyed. 80 enemies left that we have to kill. Yeah, maybe the Ancient Flame isn't the most powerful. Uh, yeah, like, it does do its job, but maybe not the best as the Ancient Light. Yeah, oh, there's, there's the Carapede. I don't know if it's a real name, but it's rather hard to check its real name when you're being bombarded, but god. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, no, those things. Oh crap, stop, stop, stop. Okay, now let's trade the Ancient Frost. See how good this is against these dudes. Oh my god, look at all these projectiles. Look at all these projectiles. God, yeah, I like this. It's powerful too. It also slows them down. There were so many projectiles on the screen. Like, some projectiles, some enemies shoot projectiles at you, like their own bullets, but you can destroy those bullets. So, when they do shoot a bullet at me, I'm invincible because there's just so many projectiles that I spawn in. That well, you see, all, all the enemy projectors get destroyed. It, I love this weapon. It's one hell toughy. I like it. But it's nothing is as good as ancient light. Yeah, ancient light is just the best at level, and because the ancient light is an expert weapon, all these are just standard weapons. But this is an expert weapon. So yeah, that's why it's so good. Beautiful. Fifty-five more enemies before we can reach in. Okay, so if we go a bit forward, let some of them spawn in. Get a bit close to the pillar. Maybe let's go towards the pillar, show you how the pillar looks like. Yeah, basically here it is, the pillar. That's how it looks like. But we can't do anything just because it has this little shield around it, so... While the shield is still up, we just have to, ow, oh, stand here and just basically take down all of its enemies. Beautiful, we're dead. To basically take down the shield and attack and destroy the pillar. It's a bit of a tough evening, let's be honest here. Uh, whatever. Oh no, land, land, land. Yeah, there's so many of them. So many of them. Hopefully we're gonna be able out to take down at least the solar pillar. Next we're gonna get on with all the other pillars. 
But yeah, is there a spawn point near that way? It's gonna take these dudes down. Yeah, is there a spawn point near? Stop, stop, I'm trying to check something. Stop. Beautiful. Further than left. There's a spawn point. Yeah, there's a spawn point near the start. It's not near. Because the spawn point that I'm at is literally right next to the solar pillars, right next to it. But there is no spawn points near the start pillar. The nearest one is the jungle hut. Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Whatever, let's go. So that's basically how the pillar looks like. So yeah, when we kill these last 37 oh, enemies, we're going to be able to actually go up close. We're going to have to go up close to it. And we're going to, and we're going to have to basically start just hitting it, destroying it. Because its shields shall fall. For now, we've got to kill off all these last dudes. And after the shields fall, these dudes will still be spawning. So we're going to have to deal with all these guys. And we're going to have to go up close to the person to the tower. Which will not be too easy, but I will. Crikey. Surprisingly, I'm not experiencing too much lag. It's, the game is actually handling pretty good, to be honest. Uh, I don't just, the ancient light is OP. God. Ow, oh, stop. So, so land, land, land. Good. Let's try this caterpillar. It's not a caterpillar. It's a caterpillar. I don't know. Something goes on. It's good. You're dead. You're dead. Nearly dead. I must say the solar pillar thing is the toughest of them all because it has just the most enemies, the most variety of enemies and the most powerful enemies. So I must say the solar pillar is the hardest one. That's also why we're gonna destroy it first because it is the hardest one but also gives the best loot. So once we take it down, we're gonna be able to get like, quite a lot of good loot, take down the other pillars. And because we really have good loot for the man that killed us, this shouldn't be too hard. Good. Four more. Two more. These are the last dudes. Let's kill you off. Let's go. Maybe don't kill him yet because it looks rubber cool. Oh, never mind, the shields are down because it looks rubber cool when the shields fall. Never mind, the shields are falling. Let's destroy the pillar. Beautiful. Destroy the pillar. Destroy it. This is like a mini boss in itself, to be honest, because it will attack you. This is the literally only pillar that will defend itself. I'm going to shoot these little meteorites at you. Oh, the other pillars will just let you kill them. This is the only one that will defend itself. Do you know, the starter's pillar also will defend itself by spawning in, like, sword enemies to uh, attack you. Oh, it's nearly dead. Beautiful. Get it. Destroy it. Come on. Go. Just go. It's nearly dead. Oh, yes, it's dead. Solar pillar is down. Wonderful. Let's get all the loot. Oh, yes. We got so much stuff. Okay, we're going to check all that out in a second. Wonderful. Let's now kill up these rust stragglers. Oh, well, Angel, that's solar pillar down. Three more to go. Oh, crikey. That's them dead. Good. Now we just have the Stardust, which we're gonna hit next. But that's that pillar down. Good. So really, what did we get? Obviously, the standard solar fragments are pretty cool. White dwarf fragments for our class. The lunar power of sleeping giant rests within. Interesting. Healer fragments? No. No, no, no. Actually, what can I make of this? Before I dump it, healer stuff. All of its healer stuff. Yep. I'm gonna sell that. There's probably like range, no bar class. Shooting star fragment. Echoes of the cosmic ballad dance in your head. Amazing. Now if we go over here. No plus mini boss, I mean events. Right there, the solar pillars down, so the stardust vortex and the nebula pillars left. Before we can spawn in the moon lord. Wonderful. So these are gonna keep. Let's go back to base now. Like I mean base. Good. Let's see what we can make of these things. Good. Get in here. I don't know, stop, get in here. Good. So that's Pong Pong Quick Stack, the minor amount of money that we have. Good. These ones too, we're gonna make, uh, make with these. Star Eater. White Dwarf Icon, Star Eater. Uh, this is basically all Frog Class. So Coders, Armor, and. Oh, and the Star Eater. The Armor needs Loop Knight, but it's basically just Star Eater. That's rather interesting, I must admit. I don't think one of them, not too much of a thrower. These, yeah, we're gonna sell those. What about these barred ones? We can make up the armor, the rock stars, double bass, blast guitar. Interesting. Turbo tube, alloy flat, so full basic wings. And sound sages lamp. Rather interesting, but I don't know if I'm too much of a bard. 159 damage, though, that's pretty high. Might try to make that. We have 5, I mean 18, so yeah. So if not, actually, maybe we can turn on them right. Good all our uh, take those. Good. Put the money in the bag. Now, I'm gonna that away. And these ones, I don't think I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna put them into this materials chest, bank them into all these souls. Beautiful. 
And now, yeah, let's see what we're gonna make of these. Obviously, we can make the the wings. We do need luminite, luminite, not luminite, luminite for. But yeah, the solar eruption and the daybreak. They're pretty powerful. Might need to get those. And obviously, the celestial shield will spawns in the moon lord. But obviously, we need to get 20 of each of the fragments. We need to kill each of the pillars before we can even get the summoner. But then obviously the moon is gonna spawn after you kill all them all, so yeah, big deal. But the celestial sigil is used when uh, you kill all the pillars and you died in a boss fight and you don't want to kill all the pillars against spawn them in, so you can just sp use the celestial sigil to spawn the moon lord without, you know, by skipping, doing that occultist all the pillars. Because basically, to fight, because uh, if you kill, if you die, once find the moon lord, you're gonna have to go all the way back and kill the lunar occultist again, take down the four pillars again, just to get, get another chance. So if you don't want to do all that, you can make the Celestial Sigil, which spawns them in by skip, and that basically lets you skip the Lunar Cultist and the Four Pillars. But first, you do have to take the Four Pillars down, because you need the Fragments from the Pillars, so... You have to do it at least once, once minimum. But yeah, apart from that, it's pretty Gucci. Mm. A drill. I don't know if I was going to make this, and this to be honest, 18 and 18 is 36 altogether. With 45, we have enough to make both. I might do really want to make the armor, but... Uh, I need 15, 15 out of 20, 45, 45, oh, okay, I have literally just enough for the armor. Maybe let's not make the solar from daybreak yet, maybe let's take off the weapons that we have and just make the armor first, after we kill the moon lord, and maybe we can make these later, yeah. Keep that for now. Good. Now, because I've run time, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna basically get out of here for starters. And next up to the gentlemen, we're gonna go back, you know, we're gonna basically go to the jungle, to the edge of the jungle more like, and we're gonna take down the Stars Pillar, and maybe the Vortex as well, should have enough time to take those two down. I don't know if we're gonna have time to take down the fourth one, the Nebula, but we might have time to take down the Nebula Pillar, but then after taking the Nebula Pillar, the Moon Lord will spawn, I don't think we're gonna have enough time to take down the three pillars and fight the Moon Lord, so, yeah. Let's just go to oh, get out. Let's just go to the um, to the jungle little uh, jungle hotel, and we're gonna end off there. In the next episode, we're gonna deploy from the jungle hotel, and they try to take down the Stardust Pillar. The Stardust Pillar isn't too difficult, so if we do die, then we shouldn't die, because it's yeah, as I said, it's not too difficult. But if we do die, then it's not too far that we have to you know go. It is actually gonna be a bit of a trek. We don't have to go like this far to get there. But we've been walking for like what ten seconds. I've already made it this much, so. Yeah, it won't be too hard. Let's just get to the cursed hotel, save our game, and yeah, next episode we're gonna start taking down the second of the three pillars. But yeah, whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a we have Ram Tamps episode, so yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've have joined me watching, you know, watching me take down the Lunatic Cultist and the Solar Pillar. Next episode we're gonna take down the Stardust Pillar and hopefully as well the Nebula. The, I mean, Vortex Pillar, but yeah, whatever. You still don't say anything interesting, whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, and I hopefully will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.